2023 was a big year in Canadian immigration, setting the stage for those looking to study, work, and settle their roots here. If you're among those planning to move to Canada, keeping up with the latest changes and policy shifts that could influence your journey is essential. In this video, we'll explain the recent events that will help you know what to expect in the Canadian immigration process in 2024. Get the inside scoop on what's happening in Canada's immigration system, such as discussion regarding the reduction of temporary residents, details on the IEC program, and of course important factors to consider when deciding between express entry and PNP. So buckle up and let's jump right into it. First, let's address the elephant in the room. Like many places, you've probably heard that Canada is grappling with housing shortages and the increasing cost of living. As a result, there have been many talks over immigration, with Mark Miller, Canada's Minister of Immigration, dropping hints that Canada may limit the number of temporary residents entering the country this year. A recent report from the Environic Institute shows that while Canadians still believe immigration is good for the economy, they're not as enthusiastic about it as they used to be. And it's not so much about not wanting to welcome immigrants. Instead, people are feeling the pinch and want housing and the increased cost of living addressed before anything else. Despite this, Canada isn't slamming the brakes on immigration altogether. They're sticking to their plans to welcome over 1.4 million newcomers over the next three years. So what has changed? Well, let's look at the International Student Department. Canada has doubled the proof of funds requirement for international students from 10,000 to over 20,000 Canadian dollars, which could reduce the number of temporary residents. This new financial requirement will apply to study permit applications received on or after January 1st, 2024. The immigration minister emphasized that these measures aim to prevent fraud by those who enter the country under false pretenses. In a way, it also aims to protect students from vulnerabilities, ensuring that they are equipped with sufficient funds to live a comfortable life while in a new country. Amidst all this, Canada is still dedicated to humanitarian work, offering temporary residence to family members of Canadians affected by the Israel-Hamas war in the Gaza Strip. Policies in effect include, one, eligible foreign nationals can apply for a fee-exempt study or open work permit, and second, prioritizing processing all existing and new permanent residence applications for Palestinians within family-based streams. Anyway, if you want to read more on this, I've included the link to the government website below, so make sure to check that out. Next, in 2024, Canada will once again welcome up to 90,000 international youth for the IEC program. The International Experience Canada, or IEC, is a work permit for adults aged 18 to 35, and depending on their country, lets them work in Canada for up to three years from over 30 participating countries. The IEC has three main categories that you can join the Working Holiday, the International Co-op, and the Young Professionals Program. The most popular of these programs is the Working Holiday Visa, which lets participants work anywhere in Canada for any employer on an open work permit. If you want to dive deeper into IEC, we recommend watching our IEC guide, which can be found on your screen, and also check out our most recent Q&A live stream, where we answer frequently asked questions about IEC found here as well. Finally, over the next three years, Canada is set to welcome hundreds of thousands of newcomers via two main immigration pathways, Express Entry and the Provincial Nominee Program. As a quick recap, Express Entry is a competitive, fast-track online system focused on skilled workers where candidates create profiles and are ranked by their CRS scores. A higher score means a better chance of being invited for permanent residency. On the other hand, PNP or the Provincial Nominee Program lets Canadian provinces and territories nominate people who match their labor market needs. And even if you don't qualify for Express Entry, you may still be eligible for a PNP, especially if your skills are in demand in a specific province. Now, when deciding between Express Entry and PNP for Canadian Immigration, consider how each option aligns with your unique situation. Express Entry is intended for individuals with strong English or French language skills, education, and skilled work experience, falling under Canada's National Occupation Classifications or Tier Categories 0, 1, 2, or 3. If you meet the criteria for one of the Express Entry programs and have a high CRS score, you could gain permanent residency in as little as six months. Additionally, the recent introduction of category-based draws further refines the process, allowing for more targeted invitations based on occupation or language proficiency. 
This means if you have particular skills or qualifications that Canada is looking for at a given time, you may have a higher chance of receiving an invitation to apply for PR. On the other hand, the PNP offers a more personalized immigration route and may be preferable to individuals with a specific connection to a province, such as a job offer or regional work experience. While PNP immigration can be slower than express entry, it provides an alternative for those who may not qualify for express entry. All in all, both economic immigration pathways require candidates to integrate into the Canadian labor market based on economic factors like education, work experience, and official language proficiency. Now, as a bonus, let's also look at the distinct opportunities offered by Quebec. This province offers its own programs outside of the PNP and Express Entry system. Some of Quebec's economic immigration programs include the Quebec Experience Program for French-speaking skilled workers with Quebec experience, the Quebec Skilled Workers Program, which is a points-based system for skilled workers, and the Quebec Skilled Workers Selection Program. And this is for workers in eligible occupations. For more information on this, make sure to check out our dedicated page on Immigration to Quebec found in the description below. To wrap up, it's evident that the Canadian immigration landscape is changing to balance out the economic realities. From potential caps on temporary residents to the implementation of category-based draws, Canada is fine-tuning its approach to attract skilled and diverse individuals. So whether you're considering express entry, PNP, or even Quebec's immigration programs, just remember that each individual situation is unique and you should choose the path that aligns best with your circumstances. And of course, we hope that this video is helpful in guiding you on how to prepare for the immigration process. And if you found this helpful, we'd also appreciate your support by liking, sharing this video, and of course, subscribing to our channel. Also, don't forget to check out all the relevant links in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.